reaction to the revelation of Jesus Christ. We've completed our journey through Scripture, and if you've been following along uh, using the Read Scripture app, the whole year we've read through the Bible. Uh, I said in the beginning it was the most influential document ever produced, and I, I hold to that. And I'm going to react a little to the book of Revelation and then kind of uh, give a reaction to Scripture as a whole. I hope that uh, you have learned um, that this has been a beneficial exercise for you. Uh, you've, if you've been going along however long it's taken you whenever you've done this. So my thoughts, <clears throat> my reaction to the book of Revelation, it is clearly the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the culmination of scripture and it is uh, dynamic and it has a lot of uh, pictures in it. Um, it can be even scary and frightening, but it is clearly about Jesus and that's my reaction to it. And it concludes the story and it describes Jesus having the power of a lion in picture, yet being like a lamb that has been sacrificed and killed. And it's that dichotomy of the story of Scripture and what I believe is the story of God that we see revealed in Jesus. It's a being, it's a power that is infinite, yet chooses to be sacrificed for us finite uh, humans. And that's a really beautiful story. And it concludes with a restoration, and it says, Behold, I make all things new. God is now, again, like we saw in the very beginning of Bible, dwelling with man, dwelling with humans, um, in harmony, in connection. We've seen the, the desire of this restoration it happening in pockets, but ultimately Revelation tells the story of, of Jesus conquering once and for all, and the dwelling of God being with man. I find it to be beautiful. Uh, Revelation is a book that uh, is difficult. Scholars deal with it and they, what is the symbology and how does this understood? And so it's not all cut and dried, but what is cut and dried is that it's about Jesus and that about that the lamb wins. That's clear. Everybody agrees on that. And I think that should be our focus uh, and that should be our understanding and the foundation. Now, we should look into it and try and understand and say, what are these prophecies talking about? How do they connect to other parts of Scripture? Revelation is steeped in Old Testament symbology. It uses that language. It has connections to beasts that are the same as in Daniel. It has a, a lot of different things going on. And we should study and see, sift through that and try to understand that, but not um, lose sight of the Lamb. You know, lose sight of the Lamb who won. Uh, and so that's my reaction uh, to Revelation. I look forward to the time when Jesus comes and conquers once for all. And I make this argument based on the entirety of Scripture. And the argument is this. That Scripture is telling the story of God. And it starts off as a power in Genesis chapter 1. And then that power starts to kind of be flushed out and we see that power and its qualities and we see that it, it we can understand the power a little bit uh, from humanity because humanity is the image of God. But it ultimately tells a story of, of God who cares more about what he made than himself. And that culminates in Jesus. It's a story that leads to Jesus, that culminates in Jesus, in the work of Jesus, and that's what it's all about. And it is miraculous, no doubt about it. From beginning to end, the story is miraculous. Uh, and, it, and I don't see a lot of the elements of the story happening in my everyday life in the sense that I don't see people rising from the dead, I don't see lame walking, I don't see anything speaking stars into existence and, and, and forming and ordering chaos and bringing order from, from darkness and bringing light and health and healing. I don't see that in my everyday life, but do I? And the reason I ask the question, do I, is because maybe every time I see someone acting in a kind way, in an unselfish way, sacrificing himself for others, I am seeing that miracle that is part of the character of God that we see on a big picture here in Scripture. I believe the Bible is not intended 
to answer every question that I might have. It wants me to know about the one who loves me so much that he died for me and rose again, conquering death and says, listen, I have restored the balance. I've taken care of the sin problem. and Ultimately, I'm going to make the earth new where you may not have all your questions answered now, but I want you to know this story and trust me because when you trust me and you trust this story, you have the opportunity to sit down face to face with the one who can answer all your questions. And that's a story that I believe in. And I want to acknowledge the fact that there are other well-meaning, uh, diligent, honest uh, people who feel differently than me about this story. Not only there may be other Christians where we differ on little things of theology and stuff like that, that exists. But there are also people who, who read the scriptures and say, I just don't buy it. Um, and I don't want to be condescending. I want to acknowledge the fact that the Bible is a story that leads to Jesus, that we believe in, that we trust, that I trust, and I invite you to trust it. I hope you trust in the story of Scripture. Trust in Jesus. Seek to know him more. Find that through Scripture. Find that through other people. Find that through the world he created. And if you're still skeptical, uh, give it a shot. If you're a believer, if you're, you're all in, realize that we are really trusting in the miraculous story of Jesus. Thankful for this. I hope you've been blessed by reading scripture. I hope this is not the end, but merely the beginning or merely a continuation of wherever you are in your scriptural journey because uh, this is something that's meant to be continually read and thought about and digested. Uh, and we digest the, 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 the little details but we should never do that at the cost of the big picture of Jesus saving the world and dealing with sin. So I hope you are blessed. I hope you have enjoyed this process. Uh, I encourage you to continue the study of Scripture. Uh, invite others. Um, seek to follow Jesus in all that you do. Surrender to him moment by moment. Uh, trust in his miraculous power. Trust that he loves you uh, more than you could ever love yourself, more than you could ever love anything else. And he demonstrated that by dying for you. And that's the story of Scripture.